Now we're going to talk about IUPEC nomenclature of alcohols. It follows a lot of the same rules that we've already learned for naming alkanes and alkynes and alkenes. But now we have to think about the alcohol. Now, when you're using IUPEC nomenclature, the first rule is always find the longest continuous chain. Now, just like an alkene and alkyne naming, you want to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the alcohol. When you're naming an alkene, you want to find the longest continuous chain that contains the double bond. Similar in alcohols, find the longest continuous chain that contains the OH group, the alcohol group. For example, if it's ethane, remove the E from the name and repla replace it with the suffix ol or all. Now, if you look at things like ethanol, you've all heard of that one. Propanol, you've all heard of that one. Isopropanol, methanol. These are all alcohols because they end in the suffix all. Okay? Alkanes end in ane, the suffix ane, those are hydrocarbons. Uh, alkenes, say propene, those are alkenes because they end in the suffix ene. So the suffix is telling you the class of compounds. So these are alcohols. Now you number the chain, giving the OH the lowest possible number. Giving the OH the lowest possible number. Number and name all substituents, just like before, and write them in, just like before, alphabetical order. Doesn't matter what the number is, it's all about alphabetical. Okay, so that's the rules that govern how to do this. Okay, guys, now before we get too deep into naming, we need to talk about something called priority. Now, priority simply means what class of compounds takes priority over others. Now, why does that matter? Well, when you're naming a compound that has multiple uh, classes of compounds in it, you have to know which ones to name first and which ones to name last. In other words, if you're naming a carboxylic acid, the name would be something, 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 oic acid. Because that's the how you name acids. They're called oic acids. Uh, for example, uh, ethanoic acid, methanoic acid, formic acid. These are how you name acids. So if you have a, an, a compound that contains a carboxylic acid, you would name it this, that, the other thing, oic acid. Because acids take priority over all other groups. Now, we're worried about alcohols right now. So alcohols take priority over amines, alkenes and alkynes, alkanes and halides. Those are the ones we've talked about in this class. So if you have an alcohol and an alkene in your molecule, you're going to name it as an alcohol. So it'll become more clear when we see examples, but just kind of remember, if you have an alcohol and an alkene or an alcohol and say a halide, you would name the molecule as an alcohol, which means that the OH group takes priority. It gets the lower number, and you name the molecule as an alcohol. So you would you would say this, that, and the other thing, all, ethane, all, el um, propanol, however you want to say it. They take priority. So we'll see examples in a moment. I just want you to keep this in mind while we move forward. So let's see some examples. Here we have our first example. It has an OH group here. So now we need to number the carbon chain closest to the OH. So you would number it like this. One, two, three, four, and five. Now the oxygen, the OH, is on carbon number two. So there's the old fashioned nomenclature, the old IUPEC way would have been to say two dash uh, pentanol. where the E from pentane has been replaced with the all because it's an alcohol. Now this is the old fashioned way. The more modern IUPAC way would be pentane dash two dash all. That's the modern way to name it. Um, this is the way you should learn, but you should also be familiar with this way because it's still around. You still see it a lot actually. Now let's try naming this example. Now, this is where priority comes into play. We have two substituents. One is an alcohol. One is a, an alkane derived. They're an alkyl group. So this is going to be named as an alcohol because the alcohol takes priority. 
it's also going to be numbered, giving the alcohol the lower number. We're also, also, we're going to have to make sure that whatever our longest chain is, it must contain the alcohol. All right? So we have to start numbering from here, not from here, because the OH has a higher priority. Okay? So this would be carbon number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. No problem. The old way, we would say 4-methyl-2-3-4-5. Dash dash so that's the old-fashioned way. You'll still see it around. The new way, we would say 4-methyl-pentane or pentan 2 all. So this is the new way. And this is the older way. You still see both kicking around, but try to make sure you know how to do this one for sure because that's the one that everyone uses. Well, that's the one that modern chemists are using, but you still see that around. Let's name this one. So the longest continuous chain would be one, two, three. So the old way, we would say 2-methyl. Pro, pain. Oh, let me. I made a mistake there. Two methyl dash two propanol. That's the old way. The new way we would say two methyl. Pro, pan, two, all. That's the old way to do it. Now, this is where I want to talk a little bit about common naming. These are IUPAC names. These are the uh, names that are systematic. But a lot of alcohols have common names. For example, this one, most people would never say 2-methylpropane-2-all. Most people would simply say T-butanol. It's not the IUPAC way, but it's a common way of calling it because this is a tertiary butyl group here. So they call it tertiary butyl alcohol. That's a common way of saying it. It's not the IUPAC way. It's not technically the correct way, but it is a way we hear all the time. So if you said to me terp-butanol, I wouldn't bat an eyelash. I would just know what you're talking about. If you were to say 2-methylpropane-2-all, it take me a minute to figure out what you're talking about, but I would know what you're talking about. So both are fine. Just this is the more accept. This is sorry. This is the common way. This is the IUPAC way. IUPAC is systematic. This is a uh, common. It's a holdover from before IUPAC, more or less, I believe. Now, let's talk about enols. Now, here's another example of priority. We learned in that priority chart that alcohols take priority over alkenes. So this molecule must be named as an alcohol because alcohols have a higher priority. It also means that the carbon bearing the, ox the OH, the hydroxyl, must have the lower number. So you must start numbering it from here. One, two, three, four, five. The alkene gets the higher number. The hydroxyl, the OH, gets the lower one because the OH takes priority. Okay, so now what if the alcohol is a substituent? If What if we have a molecule that has an acid in it, for example, a carboxylic acid? The carboxylic acid takes priority. So here, the OH is not the dominant one. The dominant one is the carboxylic acid. So this is not going to get the lower number. In fact, this is going to get the lower number. Why? Priority. Carboxylic acids take priority over alcohols. It goes by oxidation. This carbon has more oxygen, so it's the priority. So now, this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, and that's carbon four. Now the OH in this case is a substituent, so it's not gonna be called butanol. It's not gonna be three butanol, or butane three all, you're not gonna say that. Because it's the priority group is the acid. So you're going to name it as what's called a quote-unquote oic acid. So this is a butanoic acid.
ick acids we don't really cover in this class, but this is how you name carboxylic acids. They're called ick acids. So butanoic acid, butane, four carbons, oic acid, it's a carboxylic acid. So how do we name the substituent? Well, you have to say hydroxy. The OH is called a hydroxy when it's a substituent. If, it, if the OH took priority, you would just name it as an alcohol, but it doesn't in this case. In this case, it's a substituent. So this is going to be called 3-hydroxy butanoic acid. Three hydroxy butanoic acid. That's the IUPAC way of naming this molecule. The take home message here is when the OH is a substituent, it's named as a hydroxy. Okay? And in this case, the acid, the carboxylic acid, has the highest priority. So the molecule must be named as a carboxylic acid where everything else would be a substituent. Let's talk about naming dials. Naming dials is very, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now in this case, if you name it from this direction or from this direction, you get the same numbers. If it was unsymmetrical, if the OH was somewhere else, make sure you're numbering it so that the two OHs both have low numbers, okay? So this will be called a heptanol. So here it's not a heptanol because there's two alcohols. So it's a heptane diol. All right. So this would be called heptane dash two comma six dash diol. Just like when you're putting two methyl groups on something, you have to give the number of where they are and you say di. So here there's two alcohols, so we say di, so it's a di-all. If it had three OHs, it would be a triol, four tetraol, and so on. And don't forget, you must give the numbers. This is the new way. This is the new way. The old way, you would have said two comma six dash heptane di-all. That's the old-fashioned way. This is the new way. Okay, so learn the new way, please, and be familiar with the old way in case you, you see it out there in the wilderness. Naming aromatic alcohols. So now, it's not hard. It's really simple, actually. Naming aromatic ones is very simple. The first thing you have to know is that an aromatic alcohol with 1OH, this molecule right here is called phenol. 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 So that's the first thing you have to understand. This is a phenol. So now, again, priority matters. So the OH takes priority over the chlorine. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Just like, just like when, you're, when you're numbering ring systems, you always want to number it so that all the substituents have the lowest numbers possible. Okay, carbon number one is always the carbon, when naming phenols, that has the number one. So the carbon bearing the OH is always number one when it's a phenol. So this will be 2-chlorophenol. And the word phenol takes into account this whole thing. So just say phenol, and you've accounted for pretty much, mo pretty much all of the molecule. Just say phenol. And on carbon two, there's a chloro, two chlorophenol. Let's do the next one. Carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Numbering it counterclockwise gave me the lower numbers. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to use a different numbering system, so this is the wrong way to do it. If I were to do the wrong way, one, two, three, four, five, and six. My substituents would be at four and six. So that's the wrong way. Go to the other way, because watch this. If I go the other way, like I had before, you'll see 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. My substituents have lower numbers, just like in naming cycloalkanes. It's the same way, same thing, same idea. So this is going to be two comma four dash dimethyl phenol. All right, and that's how you name phenols. It's very simple.